Hey guys, Tiki Kitty Game Dev here, and in this video, I want to continue on with the bit packing and kind of show you a different method. So previously, as you can see, we used the old enum route, and I gave you a walkthrough of basically everything we're going to do. And what I want to do in this video is I want to show you how you can achieve basically the same thing using the uh, bit set that comes with uh, the well the standard library. So to begin, uh, we're going to have a little bit of a difference, and I'll show you that at the end. But basically, what I want to keep you in mind right now is using the enum, we are currently baby, well, basically accessing 8 bits while only using 1 byte and being able to manipulate each individual byte as needed. So to begin, let's go ahead and I'll comment this all out really quick. Probably should have set up a function to handle all the printing, but oh well. Now. The way you use this is, well, it's part of the standard library, so search for bit set, and then it takes in the size that you want it to be. So following along with what we were doing, we're going to do 8 bits, and I'm going to call this one just bit set. Just kind of keep the uh, naming pretty straightforward. Now, let's go ahead and print this out, if I even can. Good grief. Alright, so bit set. And I keep forgetting the T. And run it. So we can see here, we have 8 bits all zeroed out. So basically every single bit is set to false. Now let's say we want to mimic this where we have starting from 1 and 2 being true and 6 being true. So 1, 2, and 6 are both are all 3 true and everything else is set to false. Or in the case of how your computer's going to read this, is 0 and 1 are true, and 5 is true. Everything else being false. Got to remember that we're going and starting from 0. So this works kind of in the same manner as, well, everything else. But for example, we have dedicated functions that kind of help for it. So for example, if we do bit set dot set. We can pass in the element that we want to set to true. So for example, I'll do index 0, so this guy. And if I print this out now, you can see the first bit is now 1. So let me go ahead and I'll do number 2 and number 5. So index 1, or sorry, index 1 and index 5. Now we should have a matching set of bits like so. So 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1. 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1 all following the same format. So we basically have the exact same thing as what we were doing up here, but simply through this little snippet. Now there's something to take into consider, well, they don't need to take into consideration, but basically if we looked at the size, if you remember at the beginning of the video, when I printed out the size of this class, which only contained this example enum, it showed that it only took up one byte. Well, let's go ahead and print out the size of this setup here. So bytes used, and we're going to use the size of the bit set. Here you can see we're not using 1, we're using 4. And this doesn't necessarily scale, it's no particular reason. Uh, I'm not 100% sure on the reason this. My guess is it's using like an actual kind of number for this. So it's, an, it's allocating a specific amount of bytes to basically fill it. So for example, if I switch this to... Hey, if I even go all the way up to 32 for the amount of bits, you can see we're still at 4 bytes. And I can show you, I'll go ahead and print it out really quick. You know, we have 32 bits that we can use. But the second I go above this, for example, I'll go up to 64, you can see we are now using 8. So it kind of scales, as you could say, with it per se. And you can go crazy high like heck 1024. And we're using 128 bits or bytes, sorry. But I mean you get a crap ton of uh different flags that you can kind of flip on and off as you need. So it really kind of depends on you. Now let's go ahead and revert that back to eight. Now let's say we wanted to alter this. So I'll do this one bit set before reset. Now let's say we want to change position 5 back to a 0. So what we can do is instead of calling set, 
we can simply call reset. So set you can kind of think of as setting a bit to true and reset you can kind of think of setting it to false. So it flips between one and zero. So if I run this now, you can see that our fifth bit starts out as a one after we set it and then goes to a zero after we reset it. So that's kind of how you can use the bit set just on a very basic sense. Uh, most of the common operators for it just work. So for example, you can access them directly. So for example, I'll access index five just to print out what it is. And you can see it's a zero. If I, un if I comment out the reset, it should show that it's a one, that kind of stuff. So you have a lot of the common operators that you would normally have that still work with it. And again, all the same, the bitwise stuff works with it. So anyways, that's going to wrap it up for this video. This was kind of like just a simple continuation onto the previous video to kind of get you started or at least knowing what this is and how to use it on a basic sense. So if you come across it, you can hopefully at least read it and see what it's doing. Because I know in games like CSGO, if you look through some of the generated SDKs, they're using this for, I believe, their different states like uh, swimming, standing, crouching, jumping, and all that kind of stuff. If I recall right, but I could be mistaken. Anyhow, that is going to wrap up this video, and I will see you in the next one.